Hi everyone, this is the Queen Bee coming at you. And today, I'm going to be using my jump ring mandrel, but you can use any round object, or cylindrical object. Uh, my flush cutters. My flat nylon jaw pliers. And my chain nose pliers. So very basic stuff. I have some 20 gauge copper, and some 26 gauge copper, and some really fun 26 gauge artistic wire in chartreuse. My stone is a really cool uh, right angle triangle piece of fluorite. So it's got that really nice banding in it. It's great. It's 22 by 42 by 6. Of course, your stone might be an entirely different thing. And there's my green garnet chips that I'm going to be using later. For now, I am straightening out this uh, copper here because it's got a lot of kinks in it. And I'm just kind of deciding where to cut it. Just kind of looking at the stone, kind of figuring out, well, how big does it need to be? I don't know. And before I forget to mention it, um, you're going to need uh, an anvil or some sort of a bench block or something and a hammer because I will be hammering later on you'll see you'll see so I'm just deciding how I want this to go and I'm cutting about 10 inches of wire and now I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers here in a second I can find them. There we go. And I'm going to make a series of 90 degree bends like this. Because I'm going to be making a square, well, rectangular ish frame <laughs> to go around this. You know that I don't really, you know, worry about perfection because there's just no such thing. So, there's another bend. One thing that's a bit challenging is keeping it all on the same uh, plane, I guess, is the way to say. It's easy to make all these bends and then find that your piece is kind of wonky in how it wants to sit. So just be mindful of that and kind of push and pull as you need to. So I'm just going to guesstimate here, sort of, yeah, there we go, drawing an imaginary line with my pliers to see how, uh, how wide it needs to be there. Okay, and I'm going to make one more, a kind of more measured bend. Alright, are we going to do it? <laughs> there we go. Just measuring. Okay, now I'm going to go around again because I've got extra copper there, so I might as well make it kind of like a doubled frame so that I have something to weave with later. Ah, I've decided to bring out my anvil now. There we go. And it 
looks like oh yeah that's right I did do that I filmed this the other day so I'm trying to remember what I did and what I did not do right so I bent things with my fingers for the second round but then I went in and sort of and tightened up the corners with my pliers There we go. Bend. Bend. So it looks kind of like a weird concertina, <laughs> almost. Just the way there's all those bends and the way it wants to kind of sproing apart. But that kind of works in my favor, I think, in this piece. So I'm reaching for a hammer. There it is. I'm just using the flat side of my hammer. And just hammering away. It's therapeutic, you know. Wow. <laughs> that was my cats. They're nuts. Now, you're going to see that I messed up and uh, I hammered too hard on the corner right there, so I broke my wire. <laughs> Luckily it's not, it wasn't like in a critical place or anything, so I didn't have to start over, but um, just know that. <laughs> If you hammer a bend and it's kind of over top of another wire, it loses all of its strength. Oh my gosh. My cats are tearing around the place. I don't know why. They're nuts. So I'm just seeing how this triangle wants to fit. And it's fitting fine. So now we can get on with um, doing some very simple, informal, rustic, what I think of as rustic um, weaving around the frame here, because obviously it's not very strong as it sits, so, and I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do, and then kind of realizing that it's a uh, it's a closed shape, so I'm going to have to cut from the spool, which I normally don't do. But when you've got a closed shape like this, um, you can't weave right off of the spool. It's just not the way it goes. Because I'm going to be going in and out of that center. so. Here I'm just weaving a bunch around that broken end so that it's not sharp. It'll be covered up in the end. Alright. So I've kind of sped myself up here so you don't have to watch me <laughs> literally in real time weaving away here, but all I'm doing is just wrapping around the pair of wires in the beginning. And it never hurts to just grab your cab that you're using to see what's going on, because your shape is going to change. Um, no matter how much you want it to stay the same, it's not. So I recommend just embracing that and just, you know, enjoying the process and not worrying so much about perfection. It's too, uh, life is too short, you know? <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> My pliers are there in the way. So I've got a really long piece of wire here and it's really obnoxious at first because it's, well, it's annoying. 
to pull all that through all the shapes so I figured out this cool little shortcut for when I wanted to wrap around a single wire you just do that it's when I'm wrapping around the outermost wire but then when I need to go back to wrapping both you have to do it the old shove it through the center kind of way which is, which is kind of the pits but there you go so I'm not really bothering to um, tighten up the uh, wraps with my pliers or anything like I normally would just because I, it's a tree of life it's going to be a tree of life pendant so and I know that already so I I don't know I something just told me it's a tree of life why bother making a really tight formal looking frame for it when you don't when it's an organic looking pendant by nature so I've gone down one of the longer sides and I'm at the corner now so I'm sort of figuring out how I want this tree to be the triangle is sort of like um, a figurative sky for the pendant and what I'm doing is I'm wrapping around my fingers in that um, heady wrap style um, just so I have some wire on the back and I'll have some wire on the front for um, capturing that triangle there we go so that's a good idea because that way you're using a bunch of length up quicker so you don't have to deal with it and um, you're adding what will be like branches for the tree as well as a capture for your cab which is great you know I love multitasking so I'm just kind of figuring out what I need to do and sort of where those loops are those big loops around from around my fingers because some are on the top of the frame and some are on the bottom of the frame and it's gonna kind of hold everything like a well I guess like fingers it's a kind of a good analogy My wire's getting pretty darn bent. But I'm not worried about it because, again, this is an organic uh, pendant by nature, so. So we're going to do that a bit. And then I'm going to wrap a little bit around the bottom here. Just like so. I'm really not worrying about how tight the coils are and all that. Hmm. Here we go. And we're just it's, these pendants are such a ball to make. They're just so fun, like, because you're not really sure how they're going to turn out, and and they always turn out really cool, so they are fun. I can see why they are so popular. There we go. And anyway, I hope that you all um, are enjoying the videos and liking and subscribing. I've gotten some more subscribers lately, so that's really nice. And 
yeah, I hope you will give this video a thumbs up and, you know, say hi in the comments and all that. Okay, so I've got the loops kind of splayed open. You'll see it better in a second. I wasn't centered in the frame. So I've got the top loops bent up and the bottom ones behind the cab. And I'm just sort of sandwiching it in there and sort of bending the loops around the frame in kind of a temporary holding position to help my, because I only have two hands, so it acted like a third hand which was good. And then I started kind of wrapping around from the back over the frame and everything and over the stone to act like a capture because obviously those four loops of 26 gauge is not gonna cut it so yeah I'm just gonna go over it and over it not all that differently from the way I did in a previous Tree of Life pendant video where I made uh, the tree and then I had a cab in the sky that was like the moon. Um, it's also on the Tree of Life playlist if you're interested. Um, and ultimately it was a similar process. I'm doing it again because it works. Why mess with it, you know? Alright. So right now, it just looks like wire going diagonally <laughs> across a rectangular-ish frame. And I'm testing it and seeing how much mobility that cab still has. Because you really don't want it to be mobile at all in any way, obviously. All right, so I added my chips. You didn't see me do that, but that's okay. I just added them one at a time and wove around and added a couple more here and there and wove around. I didn't think you needed to see me do that. It's pretty straightforward. And I added them all kind of in that one corner there, so it would look like a a tree on an angle. As I worked, I decided I was kind of inspired in some way by um, the artist Vasily Kandinsky. If you don't know who that is, that's okay. You can you can search for Kandinsky on the on the internet, and you'll find. Um, he did a lot of paintings like this at the turn of the 20th century that were very angular and graphic and actually the 1980s kind of bastardized them <laughs> later on it kind of took those same uh, motifs and unfortunately cheapened them in the way that the 80s kind of cheapened things um, but yeah at the end of at the end of uh, this process I realized hey this looks like if Kandinsky was a jewelry maker. This is what it would have looked like. If I do say so myself. So I'm going to take my pliers now and I'm going to smoosh all those wires over there in that corner to make it into a semblance of a trunk. And these are going to become my branches for the tree. So I'm bending them in those kind of nifty those nifty little bends, you know. And for extra structure, I'm using a spare piece of copper that I had laying around that I'd cut. Ah, oh, but first I'm gonna do the loop for the bale. It's gonna be a very informal kind of bend around this smallest portion of the mandrel. 
I can't get it super close to the frame because I've already added those um, garnet chips. But that's alright. Again, this is not supposed to be a big formal affair. Here we go. Bending, bending, bending. I'm just making sure things are getting more and more stabilized. It's always important. Okay, so now I'm back to this piece of 20 gauge copper here. And I'm just going to wrap it around and just to add a little bit of structure in the back, just for security. I mean, you really don't need to go as extreme as me with your, with your structure. And you do develop a feel for this sort of thing over time. Um, you start getting a sense of, okay, this is going to, this is going to be stable. This is not and you can learn how to adjust accordingly. But for me, um, I, I just like to be extra, extra sure because I sell my work, so I don't want it ever to fall apart because that's, well, that's a bad thing. So I'm just kind of going across the front and everything and And I'll bend that 20 gauge soon around the point of that triangle like that so that it acts like a bit of a prong or something. And it kind of adds an interesting element to the frame too because it's like a little square at the top of the frame. It's cool. Geometric shapes are so cool. I love them. So I'm just wrapping the end of this wire around the frame and making sure the end is nicely tucked. Of course, I sped myself up for you so you don't have to, you know, watch the whole thing in real life. Okay. Now we're going to decorate, and I've got this piece of uh, chartreuse wire that I cut. It's, oh, I haven't cut it yet, but I will. I cut, I don't know, about a foot or so. And this is just for a shock of color um, to kind of bring that heavy colored corner of green sort of down through the trunk and th kind of through the composition as though if I was a painter I was you know just making a green green kind of stripe like thing through the whole piece so I'm just literally to tighten the chips I'm using this wire to go around them and that really really works great for holding them in place um, as well as kind of unifying that tree look with a green with a green wire instead of a copper one. I'll admit that's mainly why I bought this wire was for doing trees. So I'm literally just wrapping around where you know wherever I see fit to do so. until I have the length I need to go kind of down through the, the tree branch parts and around the tree trunk and around the back like I needed to. 
All right. There we go. So I'm just kind of wrapping around the trunk and, you know, doing whatever I want. Because this is pretty much strictly ornamental. You can do whatever you like. And I just wanted that shock of green from the corner to go all the way kind of down on an angle. It makes the piece more um, unified and dynamic. Sorry to get all art history like on this uh, video. That's uh, not meant to sound pretentious or snooty or anything. It's just... Uh, I studied a lot of it when I was in school, when I was in university. Alright, so we're done. Almost. I'm just tweaking and making sure things are lying the way I want them to. Common when you're doing this kind of thing. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you'll consider subscribing, liking, sharing the video. Um, checking me out on all my socials and uh, potentially uh, becoming a patron on Patreon for extra fun, cool stuff. And here's the finished piece. I'm shaking it to make sure it's not going to fall apart. But here you go. Here it is, all finished up. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!